In this video, I'm going to share with you tricks or shortcuts to help you navigate the Policy tab on the Palo Alto file as a pro. Let's go! Hi! If we haven't met before, my name is Ricardo. I'm the founder of NetSums, where we help security professionals level up their skills. And today, we want to talk about the Policy tab on the Palo Alto Firewall. So now I'm on my firewall, and if I head to Policies, under Security, for example, it doesn't really matter which one this one is. I'm going to show you under Security. It's usually the one that we most use. You have the column, the headers, and the columns down here. If you move your mouse on top of the headers, you see a little arrow pointing down. And if you click on this little arrow, you can see the little window opens. And the first item that you can see is columns. Here you can choose which columns you want to see and which columns you don't want to see. Take a look here on the name. If I click here on the column and disable the name, you see that the column name is gone. You won't see it anymore. And they are just columns. It happens usually. Here's an example. I have a user called Ricardo, but you cannot see the whole name. Usually the users are a little bit long. Or the names sometimes. Let me just do like this. Let's say that you see the, the window like this and you want to see the whole thing. Doesn't matter where you click on the header of this table, you can click on adjust columns and now you can see the whole values. If you come down now to the items, not the headers anymore, to the items, you also see a little arrow, but here you see different items in the window. Even depends on which columns you are. This one you can see a log viewer. If you go to the user, you don't see a log viewer anymore. If you go to the address, you can even see an edit. And the log viewer is somehow called query traffic log. We're going to go through these items so you can see which ones you could use. I use them actually a lot. I have my favorite one. I'm going to show you more to the end of the, the video. So if you come here, let's start with the name. If you come here to the name, test rule. If you click on filter, you see here on top where my mouse is, this is a filter. And you click on this filter and you're going to see that this test rule goes up to the filter. In case you, if you're wondering, just a parenthesis, that I see some rules here uh, in yellow. These rules were pushed from Panorama, which is a management appliance from the Palo Alto that you can manage several files using it. And these ones were pushed from Panorama and the rule number two, I created locally on the file so that we can test these shortcuts they're show here. So coming back to the topic, filter, and it shows on top of the filter, you can click now on this little arrow so I can apply the filter. And there is the filter applied. This intra zone and inter zone, they always get shown. Okay, let me just click on the X so I can clear the filter. Next one would be copy UURD. I'm leaving the best ones to the end. It copies the ID of the rule. So you have here on the left side numbers of the rules, but these numbers are dynamic. For example, if I come here and, and click on add and add a new rule on top of this one, let me see if I can make a test. Test two. Doesn't matter the name, source, any, destination, any. I click on OK. You can see my test two got the number three. And these tests two, I can move up. And now it has the number two. And my test rule had the number two before, now it has the number three. These numbers are dynamic. But this universal ID is static for the rule. It's usually used with APIs, with third party software, or whenever you want to copy the, the configuration from one file to the other, it can be that you want to use this uh, user ID. I won't go too deep into this matter now, but if I click on this, and if I paste here just so you can see, this is what it looks like. Let me just do the same for the test two. Make a space here. It looks like this, the ID. Usually, as I said, used with uh, APIs. I'm going to empty this. Back to our test rule. Global find. You have the global find here on the right. Here you can search the whole firewall configuration for whatever you want. If you want to search IP addresses, you can find where this IP address is able to be found in the firewall configuration. Under address, it's found three times as my inside interface from the firewall. Here it found 10011. Okay, the 17 has the, the string 10011 inside it. It's not the same IP address, but this global search searches for a string. Windows 11, also the same, it's 11. It has found an interface with this IP address, 10011. It's the interface that I have on my firewall. It found one global protect configuration that I did a while ago, that I also used this IP address. It found one security rule, allow DHCP where I have this address as a destination. 
and you found two service routes, Kerberos and LDAP. Why? Because these two services are using as a source the IP address of the file. This is an older configuration that I had, but it found also this configuration. Okay, let me just go there quickly. I'll show you quickly. Device setup, services, services route configuration. And here, it found that Kerberos is using as a source address 10.0.1.1 and LDAP also the same, okay? So this was the global find. The global find is cool. You can search also AD groups. Let's search Ricardo. He found a security rule that has a Ricardo somewhere as a user. I use this global find every day. I think it's great. Okay, so now back to our topic. So if I click here and go to global find, I think you're gonna guess what it does. It shows the text, the name, throws it into the, the global find and finds the, the corresponding, I would say, objects or configuration part where it can find this text. You can use this also with, for example, zone, global find, or an address, global find, and it finds where in the configuration I can find this object. Move. You can move the rule up or down. If you're on Panorama, it's going to be inside the same device group. But here on the file, I only have two rules as local rules. That's why it's only showing on top of the either before or after the test two. Let's say before. There, it moved. It moved up. Okay. Probably you're thinking to yourself, okay, there's a move already on the bottom. This move here gives you more options. If you're on Panorama especially, you can move to different device groups. I have a, a video about Panorama. I'm going to post in the link below so you can take a look if you're having doubts what a device group is. But you can quickly, if you want to move the rule here, or if you can go also using drag and drop, if you didn't know. Okay, and then my favorite one is the log viewer. Remember, we're under policies, and if you click on the log viewer, the file is going to jump to monitor and it's going to show all the rules or all the traffic that matched this rule. In my case, the rule I just set is not going to find anything, but you can see that this option is very powerful. You don't need to copy any rules. Before I knew this existed, I used to click here and I see that my clients also do that sometimes. Copy the rule, close the window, go to monitor, find here some rules so that you can copy the filter format. Come here, select this one, erase and paste, and then enter. It's a lot more steps. So if you come from policy directly, again, log viewer, click, two clicks, it's already searching for the traffic that has matched this rule. This one is also one that I use almost every day for sure, many times a week, and there are some other ones, also interesting. Under address, I can click here on edit. This is an object that I have in my file, net underscore 10010. If I click on edit, I can change. Oh, this is a read only. This object has been pushed from Panorama. Okay, let me just add a local net 8880 24 8880 24, for example. And if I come here to policies, Another trick, I'm going to take advantage of that we're here to show you another trick. You don't need to enter the rule to change this. You can come here and click on this and directly go to add 8880. I added this and I'm leave the other one too. And there you go. I didn't have to go in the rule. With one exception, if you have audit comment turned on, it means that you have to enter an audit comment every time that you change a rule. You have to come here and make a comment anyway. So this one, if you have audit comment, doesn't help you much. But if you don't have this, it's a great way to edit your rules. Just by clicking on the item that you want to change or to erase or to add something else. So here, if we click on edit, you cannot edit the name, but you can edit the type, let's say the type is not uh, IP net mask anymore, is uh, DNS, Google.com, something like this, okay? 
The name now doesn't really match the IP address. This was maybe not the best example, but if you have the name of a server here and you have the IP address and the server changes its IP address, you can just come here directly. It changes the object in the file, not only in this rule, but for all the rules that have this object somehow uh, linked. This is the edit. The filter we knew, remove, you can remove this guy from the rule, not from the file. I'll say no. This one I think I can remove. Yeah, let me remove this one. There you go. It has been removed. What else do we have? The value. If you want to see the value inside the object, there you go. It's an FQDN, dnsgoogle.com. Query traffic log is similar than log viewer from here. Let me show you. Query traffic log. It jumps to monitor. Okay, I have an FQDN now. It's not, maybe it's not the best example. Let me see if I can. Go to this one. Address source in Ubuntu one. This is my object. And this is the object that it found. It already converted to the IP address. This one can also be cool. Then you can jump directly from here to the monitor. And what else do we have? Global find, of course. The global find is the same for all of them. It searches here on the using the global find. So guys, I know there has been a while that I haven't posted any video anymore. I was having a little bit of a uh, time problem to post more videos. Now I think I found a system that I will manage to be posting videos more frequently. And I hope you got some value from this video. If you liked it, you can subscribe to the channel. It helps us a lot. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.